how did you come up with the um, the idea for Ren? Like, what was your background for? I didn't come up with Ren. Actually, Ren and Stippy were characters that John Kay created for a, an animated show he created called Your Gang. And he pitched it around and uh, pitched it to Nickelodeon. And they liked the dog and the cat. They were kind of minor characters in the show. They said, let's do a show about those guys. So we created the Ren and Stippy show based on those characters. But at that point, they were more or less just character designs with sort of personalities, but not much more. See, the thing about the Ren and Stimpy show that stands out to me, it was, it was so different than everything else that was on Nickelodeon. It was definitely an adult cartoon that was kind of under the guise for kids. And you had know, a lot it, of it, that's one way to describe it, but uh, really, we were making a kid's cartoon. It just depends on what your uh, idea of what kids should or shouldn't see is. I think that kids are smarter than people think. I think the kids know more than people think, and uh, they have good senses of humor. They're funny. They get, you know, racy humor. And I, you know, we designed the show to be funny for kids and funny to watch and to look at because it's just funny animation and funny characters doing funny stuff. And then under that, we put layer upon layer upon layer of, of innuendo and, and suggestive stuff. Not in a, not in a in a creepy, underhanded way. It was just a kind. It, it's sophisticated humor. It's sophisticated because it's got pathos. It's got uh, satire. It's got uh, a million different kinds of humor. It's deep stuff, you know. And there's there's jokes in the drawings. There's jokes in in attitudes and deliveries of stuff. So uh, and you know, people have always put stuff in cartoons. You look, watch Warner Brothers cartoons in the '40s. There's tons of suggestive stuff in there that when I grew up, I'm like, aha, now I get that joke. Well, that's what we wanted to do with Brandon Stippy. We wanted it to be funny for kids, and then we wanted them to grow up and really get the joke, so that the show has legs and it has some depth. I think a lot of cartoons that are uh, pigeonholed for an audience, say, 6 to 11 years old, which is this weird graph that they created for programming, and what happens is you talk down to kids and you have some preconceived notion about, well, we better decide what's right for 6 or 11 year olds. Well, I think that's all BS. I mean, I think it ended too soon personally, but how did you feel about when they revamped it in the 2000s, when they put it on Spike, when they did the... You know, I had nothing to do with that. That was way, you know, beyond innuendo. Well, I don't really have anything to say about it because I actually haven't watched the cartoons. I was a little annoyed when I wasn't asked to do them because I was the one who finished the show. I was the one who delivered the show. Uh, when someone else didn't. So when that person was asked to do the new shows, and I had no idea they were even thinking about doing new shows, I didn't know they were being made. No one told me. You know, I never got copies of the DVDs when they came out. And somebody else did the commentary on my cartoons. You know, and so I wasn't I wasn't even given free copies of those cartoons. Wow. And yet I was the creative director of the show. Yet I was the one who delivered the shows. You know, I'm the one who directed more of them than anyone. Do you have a favorite episode that you've ever worked on? Stimpy's Invention. You know, and I, I it's my favorite because it, there's a lot of me in it. I wrote it, it was my idea, I wrote it, I storyboarded it, and uh, when we showed it at a uh, party, we had through a big party, there was lots of Hollywood types there, and uh, people were laughing out loud with tears running down their face. And I looked around, and I'd never seen anyone really do more than a chuckle, even at the funniest cartoons. You know, it's like people are just belly laughing. I thought, this is like a high point in my life. This is one of those moments that you got to remember and appreciate for the rest of your life because you, like, did something right, you know. And I... You know, when when John and I worked closely together on a project like that, we made some pretty great cartoons. You know, and that, that's kind of my favorite.